Hey guys, today I'll be showing you how I like to engrave metals with a Dremel rotary tool. I'm going to engrave this brass lock, and in the latter half of the video I'll engrave some stainless steel shot glasses. This lock is going to be sent to a fellow YouTuber, the lockpicking lawyer. I printed out the name in a font I like, and I'll start with just cutting it out and gluing it where I want it engraved with some plain school glue. Once that's dry, we're ready to rumble. I'll be using a Dremel 7134 diamond wheel point. This is a pretty small engraving, so I'm using it instead of the 84922, just so I get a little more precision. But also because I want to engrave a little deeper, which the diamond wheel will help with, rather than just etching the top of it as I would with the 84922, or other similar grinding stones. I'm using a Dremel 4300 with a flex shaft, but any high speed rotary tool should be fine for this. I'm running it at 20,000 RPM for the whole video. I'm not actually sure the best RPM, but 20,000 worked fine for me. By the way, I'm wearing a P100 mask and eye protection since I don't want any metal particles in my lungs or eyes. I'm also wearing hearing protection, cause why not? If you plan on using a rotary tool to engrave metal, make sure you read its user manual and follow its safety recommendations. Engraving metal like this is really straightforward. You just want to engrave into the letters until your shirt's gone through the paper and marked the metal. So you don't need much depth at all. Make sure to stay in the lines and mark every portion of the letter. Don't dig in or the engraved depth will be inconsistent. So why am I engraving a lock for a YouTuber? He's been one of my favorite YouTubers for a while now, and it always blows me away how he can pick practically any lock he comes across. He also takes fan mail, so what better way to show my appreciation than to customize a lock for him and send it over. Hopefully he'll film picking it. This is a Spanish lock brand, and to my knowledge he hasn't done this specific lock before. Alright, we've engraved through the paper, we can clearly see we've gone through the patina of the brass, so we know we'll be able to see the design once the paper is removed. I use school glue since it's not waterproof, so a quick rinse under the tap will take this off. Here we are with the glue all cleaned off. We have a rough outline, but as you can see there's some flaws, some missing spots, and overall it's not very thick. So we can touch it up with the 7134 as we eyeball it and compare it to the original font. I print two just so I have a reference if I need it. The 7134 is great for straight lines, but the edge on the tip makes it hard to get good curves, so I just switched over to the round 7103 to clean up the curves. Here we are. It's definitely not perfect, but really nothing ever is. I love the look of the brass under the patina, so I do recommend using a material when you're engraving that'll give it a nice contrast like this. Hopefully the lockpicking lawyer likes this. You may have seen in a previous video that I started these stainless steel shot glass engravings, but now I'll finish them. I started the same way by printing out a font and then gluing it, but I started engraving them with the Dremel 84922 and then the 83702 because I wanted that edge on the tip for making straight lines. I also tried the 83322, but none of them were as precise as I needed them to be for this application. Every one of the bits I've mentioned so far, I've gotten in a pretty cheap kit from Amazon, which I'll link in the description. Usually I use these grinding stones on glass, but here I was using them on steel and they were doing surprisingly fast against it. You'll find though if you're engraving wide letters on metal, it's better to use a thicker bit like one of these stones because it leaves less individual tool marks. If you only have a small bit, you can crosshatch the design so there aren't as many obvious tool marks. Just engrave vertically and overlap with horizontal marks and at least the lettering will look consistent. Because they weren't as precise as I wanted and they're wearing out and becoming even more dull, I did sharpen all the edges with a cheap diamond point bit, and we're left with these. They look pretty good, but honestly they're less pretty than the lock. I really like the lock because 
of that contrast between the patina and the engraving, whereas the shot glasses are so shiny already that the engraving doesn't look as noticeable. I find straight lines are much easier than curved lines when I'm engraving metal, especially if the bit has an edge on it that you can use, but curved designs are still achievable. Keep in mind there's no easy way to cover up a mistake, so go really slowly and try not to slip. If you do slip and engrave outside the lines, you either have to leave it or just make the design wider to cover it up. Here's the zebra wood stand I made for the glasses. There's a bit of the process of making this on my Instagram, which is titled the same as the channel. The stand is actually a couple years old, but all the engraved glass shot glasses I had that were in it initially were broken within a few months, so I thought steel would be more appropriate. And as you can see, we already have one that got caught in the garbage disposal. Roommates, you know, it's bound to happen. Well, if you're seeing this video because the lockpicking lawyer filmed picking this lock, that's super exciting, and please let me know about it in the comments. For the rest of you, thank you as always for being here. If you're new, feel free to subscribe if you think I earned it. I actually wanted to speak for a minute about this channel before I end this video. We recently hit 5,000 subscribers, actually nearly 6,000 as of recording this, and I just want to share how crazy that is and how excited I am about it. One year ago, there were barely a thousand subscribers on this channel, so it's so cool to see how fast this community has grown. You guys keep me motivated with your comments, and it's so rewarding whenever someone says that a video taught them something or inspired them to start carving. This hobby really keeps me happy, and having you guys around to share my projects with is such a privilege. I haven't been uploading nearly as much as I would like, mostly because I've been really busy in college, but I'll try my best to get videos out as often as I can. I have a ton of projects filmed that I haven't edited yet since I'm terrible and slow at editing, so I'm showing some of them now that you can expect to see videos about soon. Or not soon, I'm really not sure. I'm also still not really sure what I want to focus on for this channel. So I did some projects about Dremel attachments and some classic wood carving videos, some epoxy stuff, some stuff with stone, and just some random things I thought would be fun. This winter I plan on pumping out some more projects, I was thinking about trying some new tools like a laser engraver or carving with rotary tools other than a Dremel to compare them. So please let me know in the comments what you'd like to see. At the end of the day, I'll probably just stick to a Dremel and make videos that I find interesting to keep this channel as fun for me as it has been for the past couple of years. Anyways, thank you again for your support, and as always, I'll see you next time.